Welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about tangents and secants. And then we're going to split this up into two parts. And the next section in another video, so that this is not too long, we're going to talk about the two tangent theorem and how it applies uh, to walk around problems and then also uh, to a common tangent procedure. Okay, so let's move on. Let's talk about tangents and secants. We're going to talk about tangents first. So a tangent is going to be a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. So I have three tangent lines, the blue line, the green line, and the red line. They're all tangent lines because it intersects the circle exactly at one point. And that point of intersection is called the point of tangency. So this little point here is a point of tangency. I can draw another point here uh, for the green line and the circle. That's a point of tangency. And then I also have a point of tangency for the red line and the circle. Now a tangent segment, so a tangent is a line, but I can say a tangent segment is going to be the part of the tangent line between the point of contact, so here, a, let's say it's A, and also the uh, external portion, uh, point B. So the tangent segment is a part of the tangent line between the point of contact and the point outside, or a point identified outside the circle. So I, I can have tangent segments on either side of the tangent line, or on either side of the point of tangency. So again, tangent line is a line which has one point of contact with a circle. Tangent segment includes the point of tangency and another point outside of the circle on the uh, tangent line. All right, let's talk about tangent circles. Tangent circles, there are two types of tangent circles. The first type is an externally tangent circle where I have two circles that meet <coughs> um, at one point, so they're tangent, and uh, both circles are outside of each other. So we call those externally tangent circles. The second type of tangent circle is going to be internally tangent circles. So you can see I have circle B and circle C, and circle B is inside of circle C. So we say they're internally tangent. So again, two types of circles. One is external, uh, externally tangent. So the circles meet at one point. Both circles are outside of each other. And then I have internally tangent circles. I have one circle that's inside of another. Now, I also want to tell you about line of centers. The line of centers is that line or that segment between the centers of the circle. So I have circle B and circle C. And I draw a line between the centers. That's called the line or the segment of centers. All right, now we're going to talk about common tangents. And again, we have two types of uh, common tangents. The first <coughs> is the common internal tangent. So the common internal tangent runs between the two circles. So let's say this is circle A and circle B. I have a common internal tangent that touches both circles at one point. So it's a common tangent to both circles. And it runs in between the two circles. So we say it's a common internal tangent. Now we also have a common external tangent. So if I have two circles, let's say O and circle P, and then I have a common external tangent. It runs outside, but not in between the two circles, touching each circle at exactly one point. Uh, and so we call that a common external tangent. And we're going to use common external tangents uh, when you come back for the second portion of this discussion on the uh, finding the length of a common tangent. OK, uh, tangent postulate. So some of the things you need to know about tangents. A tangent is going to be perpendicular to the radius drawn the point of contact. So I have one tangent here, I have circle O, I have another tangent, and I know that these two tangents are going to be uh, perpendicular to the radius that's drawn from the center of circle O to the tangent to that point of tangency. Right, so that's one postulate. And then secondly, if a line is perpendicular to a radius at its outer point, so if I were to draw um, some line here, and then I said that from O to that point, uh, it's perpendicular to the radius. Then I know that I can say that this tangent, let's call it AB, is going to be a tangent. All right, so if a line is perpendicular, AB is perpendicular to the radius OB at its, at, uh, its outer end point, then it is tangent to the circle. AB is tangent to circle O. So two tangent postulates. One's kind of the reverse of the other. A the tangent is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of contact. 
And if a line is perpendicular to the radius at its outer endpoint, then it is tangent to the circle. So that brings us to uh, a theorem. It's called the two tangent theorem. And I call this the ice cream cone theorem, just to help you remember what's going on. Or you could call it the uh, cone head theorem or something else that you want to come up with. Uh, to me, this looks like an ice cream cone. Uh, probably have some blueberry ice cream, I'm not sure. Uh, but the theorem says if two tangent segments are drawn to a circle from an external point, so I have two segments drawn to circle O, and those two segments are tangent segments from an external point A, and those segments are congruent. So I know AB is going to be congruent to AC. Well, how do we figure that out? So what we're going to do is we're going to draw, and I have changed the letters on you, I'm going to draw a line from B to D, uh, that point that the two tangent segments originate from. And then I'm going to draw my radius from B to A and then from B to C. Well, I know that B to A to B to C, uh, both segments are congruent because all radii of a circle are congruent. I know that B, D is ref uh, congruent to itself by the reflexive property. I know just by the postulate that we express that B, A, D is a right angle and B, C, D is a right angle. So by the HL postulate, I can say that triangle BAD is congruent to BCD. Uh, and then by CPCTC, I can say that AD, segment AD, is congruent to CD. So I've just proven the two tangent theorem for you. So again, two tangent theorem says if two tangent segments are drawn to a circle from an external point D, then those segments are congruent. OK, so that's it for this portion. Uh, actually, we're going to talk about secants, uh, and then we'll be done. All right, so a secant, a secant is a line that intersects a circle at exactly two points. So I have my secant, which is a line, and it intersects the circle at two points, A and B, and it forms a chord. So a secant is different than a tangent in that a secant intersects the circle at two points, whereas a tangent intersects at uh, one point. Secant segment is the part of the secant line that joins a point outside of the circle uh, to the farther intersection point of the secant of the circle. So secant segment would be uh, A to C. So A to C is that secant segment. It's a part of the secant line that joins a point outside the circle to the farther intersection point of the secant in the circle. The external part B to C of a secant segment is a part of the secant line that joins the outside point the nearer point of the intersection. So external portion would be B to C, secant segment is A to C. All right, that's it now. So we talked about tangents and secants, and you have the definition and uh, some characteristics of both tangents and uh, secants. So come back and join us for walk around problems and also uh, finding common tangents, length of common tangents, in the next edition of Otten Math.